Which writer was a prominent figure in the Harlem Renaissance and is the author of the iconic novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God? A. Toni Morrison B. Zora Neale Hurston C. Maya Angelou or D. Phyllis Whitley You have 10 seconds to answer. Your answer is B. Zora Neale Hurston. Hurston was an American novelist, short story writer, folklorist, and anthropologist. Of Hurston's four novels, more than 50 published short stories, plays, and essays, she is best known for her 1937 novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Good morning, Prosper. I am JT Graham. Welcome to another episode of Eagle Nation News. We got Shaznay Hardiman on the couch with me today. Yesterday marked the very beginning of the presidential primaries with the Iowa caucuses taking place last night. I'm here with Mark Warner to give us a little more insight about that. Mark, thanks for being on today. Glad to be here. So I was looking at the news today, and, it, and, it's, and what I saw was Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, you know, they're practically neck and neck. Um, over on the Republican side, we're seeing the exact same thing. It's a very close race. So why Iowa? Why is Iowa so significant? Well, Iowa is the first real uh, primary state, the first caucus state, in which uh, it gives candidates a first sort of impression on voters and gives them a first chance to go mm -hmm. out there All and right. to expand their image on social media, their ground game, and compete for Iowa, which is a very diverse state in its sort of political views. Uh, so it's a great place to sort of start off the Absolutely. You, you just mentioned social media, and that's something else I wanted to ask you because, you know, this election will probably be the first time we've ever seen social media develop to the point where it has, um, how, it, how it is today. What do you think that's going to do, um, you know, impact-wise on the race? Well, social media overall has allowed for a lot of candidates like a Bernie Sanders who maybe wouldn't have gotten as much attention from the right. normal media okay. sources to be able to sort of rise in these polls and to be able to sort of create a base of voters who support him. And it's also allowed for more candidates to launch uh, better attack ads and go after candidates more uh, with smear campaigns as we've seen or with uh, bringing up scandals that many candidates have had in the past yeah, we've seen and allow them yeah. to uh, make this a major issue for voters. Absolutely. So, so could you explain on what exactly happened yesterday? Well, on the Democratic side of things, uh, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton essentially split the vote 50-50. Mm -hmm. And while Clinton might have a small, small edge uh, overall and may be able to get those delegates, uh, what this election has really shown is that uh, Bernie Sanders really can compete with Hillary Clinton in a major election and that he does have the ability to sort of win over more voters over to uh, his message and over to his side and be able to swing the election more in that direction. And over on the Republican side, we saw that Ted Cruz, mm -hmm. who uh, was surprisingly actually able to pull off the election over uh, Donald Trump, uh, which has greatly diminished his sort of uh, personality in the race. And also Marco Rubio has really surprised a lot of people, doing a lot better than uh, some of the more establishment mm -hmm. governor candidates in the race. All right. Thanks, Mark. And something else that I saw this morning, um, there's, a, there's a difference between a caucus and a primary. Now, I didn't know this. And uh, a lot of you guys probably don't know either, but what is that difference? Uh, well, a primary is simply where people just go and they vote in an election, mm -hmm. whereas a caucus, on the other hand, is this same sort of vote, but with more of a discussion aspect before it, uh, where candidates or a representative from those candidates will typically come up and give some sort of speech or statement, and then people will essentially uh, congregate around whatever candidate they support, and uh, the votes will be tallied that way, which uh, makes it a lot different from a primary because you can't have the sort of recounts you normally see exactly. uh, with a primary. Yeah. All right, well, thanks a lot, Mark. Always a pleasure. Thank you. As the world becomes more and more technology-driven, the environment seems to become less and less of a priority. Here is one way that Prosper High School is going green. Earlier this month, three vending machines were added to the arsenal of 12 already stationed here at PHS. And with a growing number of vending machines comes a growing need for recycling bins. Recycling is something that's very important, especially in our area. And we want to make sure that we are contributing as a school to the recycling effort 
and that we're matching what our community is doing. Mr. Berliner's class started the recycling initiative to get PHS more in tune with Prosper's normal community recycling habits. The class has been planning to unleash the hoard of recycling bins since late last year, and since the initiative was approved, over 200 bins have been placed throughout the school. The reason I started doing it is when I got here, I just noticed that nobody had one, and I thought this is going to be a really huge school within the next few years, and there's just absolutely no reason why we're not recycling. I also have very many young sons of my own, and I'm trying to teach them that this is a pretty important thing. But Mr. Berliner hasn't stopped there. He plans on expanding the initiative by placing giant blue recycling bins around the cafeteria and school, reminding students to keep recycling. Uh, the holes will hopefully get the students to realize that what they should drop in is either a bottle or a can and not all their trash. And there'll be big, huge blue uh, wheeled bins, so they'll be pretty obvious. We're going to get some signs put on there. And then once we start collecting all that, I've reached out to two different recycling centers about bringing stuff to them and actually getting the money back here to the school. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Austin Garcia. Now let's send it over to Truett Williams with sports. Tonight in the Eagles and Nest, both boys and girls basketball teams face off against Lovejoy. Both teams are ranked first place in the district. Tonight is a huge rivalry game for the boys, and with their district standings being so tight, they need a win to stay on top of the district. Both teams' coaches have requested a big turnout in the student section where the curtain of distraction will be on in full effect. Keep in mind that McKinney North missed their last four free throw attempts in last week's home game thanks in part to the curtain of distraction. This past week, even Olympian Michael Phelps jumped into the curtain of distraction at the Arizona State basketball game. Let's take a look. The greatest Olympian in history. Now using Tempe as his home, training for another Olympic Games. <laughs> you know why this is great? Because Michael was such a good swimmer, he didn't go to college. So he's getting his college experience. That's great. Also, in women's golf, we had an unexpected surprise this past week. Let's check it out. Last Thursday, on January 28th, Prosper Golf's Ali Alford recorded her very first hole in one. The stage was set at a par 3 of hole 9 at General Creek Golf Course here in Prosper. Allie teed off with a sand wedge 105 yards out and hit a perfect shot that rolled right into the hole. Well, that's all we have for you today in the world of sports here at PHS. For Eagle Nation Sports, I'm Truett Williams. And here is Colton Nicious with your Daily Bullet. Relay for Life Illuminaries can be purchased for $10 online from a Stuco representative on the night of the event. Inside of each personal bag will be lit in honor of those who have had cancer. All National Honor Society's members are required to attend a meeting after school on Tuesday until 420. Interactive Club will meet Wednesday after school in Mr. McCall's room. They will be discussing the next community service project. Today during all lunches, the French Club will be selling really thin Pancakes, which are crepes. All proceeds will be going to charity. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Cole Nicious. And that's it for our show today. For Eagle Nation News, I'm JT Graham. And I'm Shaznay Hardiman. Live long and prosper.